Almost 20 years ago, we started a little horse rescue called NorCal Equine Rescue. And even at those humble beginnings, we knew we have to document what we're doing. We have to make videos about it. And I've just got to tell you, video technology was quite different back then. They really didn't even have iPhones in everybody's hands yet. And we didn't really have great internet service any of the locations we were at. So when I would write, you know, like these daily blogs that we'd mm -hmm. write together, I'd resize the photos really small so they could actually upload without taking all day. But in the early days, when we started rescuing horses, um, we were trying to figure out an organization name and we ended up calling it NorCal for Northern California and then Equine Rescue because we were rescuing horses. And we soon realized that um, we, we outgrew our name. But let's go back and let's watch some of those early videos because they're, they're kind of like just a time capsule from the past. And it's very interesting to see how we've changed mm -hmm. and the organization has changed so much and really just everything has changed except for there's one key component that hasn't changed in all 20 years. So let's take a look. NorCal Equine Rescue is a nonprofit 501c3 animal welfare organization that serves equines of all needs. Auction horses with grim futures that are brought back to health and given a second chance at leading happy, safe lives. Neglected horses being denied the basic needs of any living creature, brought back lovingly from the brink of death. Older horses that have given their lives to serving their human companions. Young horses with potential, mules and donkeys eager for love and affection. Ponies just waiting for the love of a child. Equines living under terrible conditions, no pastures to roam, no clean areas to lie down. Stunning equines that given a chance will recover to a life of love and security. We can't do it alone. Your support can make the difference between life and death for equines in need. NorCal Equine Rescue is looking for monthly sponsors to provide a steady budget to enable us to continue our efforts. Our new trailer was donated in loving memory of Robert and Louise Croom to help further our efforts. We have advertising space available on our new 24-foot trailer with hundreds of miles of exposure per month. We were once isolated and unable to rescue in the harsh winter weather, but 2006 has brought a new level of commitment from our team. We have moved down to a new location and stepped out in faith that you will help support our efforts. Help us speak out and give voice to those who have none. Zorro, our 50th horse rescued in 2005, was a magnificent horse that suffered from string halt, a condition that was causing a tendon in his leg to contract, hold, and then release. Each step brought pain and agony, using so much energy to move that his weight was a serious concern. Now thanks to the Tassie Animal Fund, Zorro with surgery has made a full recovery. Zorro's life was very grim. He was purchased from a livestock auction where a known killer buyer was the only person bidding for his future. Who wanted to buy a horse that couldn't walk? Killer buyers. People that would have doomed him to death in a slaughterhouse. Killed for meat that could end up on somebody's dinner plate. Killed without thought by the butcher's knife. No longer is Zorro unable to walk. He was well trained to ride before he became lame with string halt, and now he loves to be ridden, moving with the wind in his mane, his rider moving with him as one. Thanks to Zorro's sponsors and medical team, he is now once again able to run free, 
Life no longer grim, living his life with his new family. So that was kind of an interesting video. It's it's so old. It's I mean it's not twenty years old, but it's a pretty old video. And uh, please don't contact us at any of those yeah. because they don't work anymore. Yeah, don't. Those are very old contacts. But one thing I think you know is so interesting is we started rescuing horses at auctions. That, mm -hmm. That's what the the whole mission was: is saving horses out of the slaughter pipeline. And this next video, that's what it is. And this was the first one I like tried to edit together and like. You helped me on it, and it was like early, early days, but... Um, well, I mean, it's from December 2005. I mean, that's yeah. a long time ago. And what's interesting is that truck right there, we flew to Texas to buy that truck with our personal money, and when we got there, the uh, transfer case was busted, and so they knocked a couple hundred dollars off. It was a cheap truck. I mean, it yeah. was... It, it was, was an eBay special. Yep, yeah. and uh, it made it for several years in the organization. But um, that was the first truck the Horse Plus kind of used that was ours. And uh, it was an Orca Equine Rescue at the time, so. So in the previous video, they saw mm -hmm. that we, we did get a new truck and trailer. Sure. Um, but this this truck and trailer, this was the original start off one after I stopped using my mom and dad's truck mm -hmm. and their horse trailer. So that was our original rescue rig. So yeah, the theme that's going to run through all these videos though is is that we rescue from auctions. And that's what we've done. So. You want you ready to check out this yeah. video? All right. The evening tide is running fast. My life is nearly done. I wonder how the years went by so fast. I watch white horses play. Against the distant setting sun As the memories flood back Of years gone past But as the night comes creeping in My journey's just begun For in dreams Even old horses dance I'm flying to a place Far beyond the setting sun Yes, in dreams Even old horses dance Time was not a friend of mine He stole my to say And left me here To come the years today When life was full of voices and of things still left to do Now I'm dreaming of the years that slipped away But as the night comes creeping in My journey's just begun For in dreams even old horses dance I'm flying to a place Far beyond the setting sun Yes, in dreams Even old horses dance Don't worry about the days to come They'll all be here so fast Live today Fill every hour with fun Live each day for memories for happy times that last Then in old age your dreams will chase the sun And as the night comes creeping in My journey's just begun For in dreams even old horses dance I'm flying to a place far beyond in sound, yes, in dreams, even old horses dance. Yes, in dreams, even old horses dance. 
That was a really powerful video. I mean, horse plight at auctions hasn't changed in 20 years that we've been going. It really hasn't. And what I see at auctions is no difference than when I was four years old going to auctions to when I was 20 going to auctions till now I'm almost 40 going to auctions. It consistently stays just basically antiquated for these animals. There's the, yeah. the laws when it comes to livestock animals and livestock is basically s slaughter animals is they don't have rights. You know, there's a lot of happy though. There's a lot of happy. There's a lot of happy in the rescue life. And this story is, is really touched my heart. This lady had sold her horse and 10 years later, somebody surrenders a horse. She saw it on her daily blog and it's like, that's my old horse. And well, that's a great video. It was, it was really great. And just talking to her, she was so excited. And we get a lot of people that are like, that's my old horse. And they'll send us pictures and the markings are totally different. And so when she contacted us, that was the first thing. I'm like, send me pictures, let me match up. Yeah. And everything matched up. I'm like, you got to get out here. This is your old horse. Did the horse remember her? I think so. Horses remember yeah. everything. It sure acted like it remembered her. And it was, it was really fun to see that reunion, a 10 year reunion. We just had a very special reunion take place here at Horse Plus Humane Society. A week ago, an older appy named Captain was surrendered to us. It turns out that after seeing him on our daily blog, Captain's old family from years ago recognized him. I've been following um, the rescue for a couple of years now, and I see watch the blog every day, and been able to contribute a little bit. and. Um, this guy popped up and I saw immediately who he was. Tawny asked that pictures be sent to confirm his identity. He was definitely the same horse. Cappy's owner was completely dumbfounded that 10 years later her precious boy turned up alive and well, but at our shelter. Where had he been for 10 years? And what had he gone through? Cappy. Cappy is my old man. I got him as a three year old and kept him till he was 14. He's 24 now. When he was 14, I moved out of state and I placed him with some people with the agreement that he would come back to me if it didn't work out. Then five years ago, I got a call that he had been killed by a hunter went through the grieving process there, which was extremely difficult because he is such a good old boy. This was a special reunion. Captain, or Cappy as she calls him, held his head high as his mom hugged him, okay. sobbing with joy. He okay. was alive and well. He had not been killed. So sorry. Captain's old owner learned the hard lesson that only you, the owner, can make sure that your beloved horse is cared for. You can try your best, but do you really know the home he's going into? See him again. To see him again, of course. Yeah. Of course. And to see his picture on my computer screen was the most incredible experience that I can remember. And to know that he was still with us and that he was okay and alive and just waiting for me to come and get him. There's probably a lot of betrayal feeling when you realize that the people had sold him or gotten rid of him and then lied I, about it. I am infuriated and I am going, I never would have believed that I would see him again. This is just incredible. And we're just so grateful for the rescue and for everybody that brought him here. And uh, I know that he'll have a, uh, the best life he can have going home with Sonia. If you have a horse that you love and treasure, if there's any way that you can keep him or her, please do. And if you have to surrender, surrender to a place like this, Horse Plus, so that you know that your partner, your loved horse, will be safe. There's just no better way. And I thank God for this organization. As the trailer pulled away, 
We all wished every senior horse that comes to us could have this happy of an adoption. Every horse at one point had someone that loved and cared for him. Cappy is one lucky boy to have found his mom. Is that you? I mean, <laughs> that looks like a little kid now from this perspective in life. And <laughs> well, I had braces on <laughs> you then, did? I think. Yes, you did um, have braces. And uh, this little dog that's in this upcoming video. She, she, her, she pulled at my heartstrings for the longest time. So we'd drive up and down this road and I'd see her and she would just take off running. Mm. And, and then finally I, I was able to get her, which you'll see in this video. Um, but the poor little thing, it was, it was just heartbreaking. Um, so that's when people dump animals. It just, it's, it, it's cringing because it's like you're just putting a little animal out there that can suffer and, um, and who knows what will happen to it. And this poor little dog had gone through a lot of, a lot of misery. Um, but at this point, we were Horse Plus Humane Society. Like our name had changed, which yeah. you probably saw in one of the previous little, little videos. But our focus has always been horses. But any little animal that comes along that needs help, uh, we don't want to turn them away just because they're not a horse. Uh, we believe they need help. So that's when, you know, Horse Plus became Horse Plus because it's Horses Plus everything else that comes along that needs help. I think this was our first dog we rescued, if mm, I remember right. There could have been one maybe, or two others. Maybe. One thing that was just so sad with uh, Little Wafy, that's what we ended up calling her, was when she was x-rayed, she actually had little bullets in her from a shotgun. Yeah, it was, uh, I remember when the x-ray was taken and when, you know, it was getting up on the screen and we're like, wait, what's this? She had such a rough little life and she was so skinny uh, when we yeah. got her and she was so fearful of everybody. But by the time I'd gotten her to a point where she could have been adopted, it was like, it would be unfair to adopt her out. So I, I ended up adopting her and she lived on for several, for several more years, um, had a very happy little life. And I, I do really miss her, but yeah, I love little dogs. Yeah, for sure. Now, an interesting little side note about Wafy is she became what was affectionately known as the burrito monster. If a Taco Bell burrito, or I assume any burrito of any brand came on the property, she would break into the vehicle and steal that burrito yeah. and eat the whole thing. Like, yeah. she did this so many times, like people knew you just don't bring burritos to, to the rescue. Yeah. and. Uh, it, which just kind of brought a bunch of humor because we did have several people working for us at the time and they all knew you keep the burritos away from Wafy because she's going to eat them. She's going to find out. She's, she's going to find out. That door is open. She's going to be in there and she's going to be eating the burritos. And you won't have it for lunch. So yeah. <laughs> let's watch your story. And, and you might want to grab some tissues for this one because it's really sad. This is a stretch of road where Little Waif was found. Um, when I came across her, it was one of the most heart-wrenching things to see. She was emaciated, her body was just, I mean, really nothing but bones, and she had been hit by a car. When she was in the vehicle, she just, she laid there as if, as if she was dead. The first thing we did was feed her. Her stomach was so small, she really couldn't eat that much. She was only able to eat a few mouthfuls. The next thing we did was give her a bath. She was able to go to sleep in what was probably the most comfortable environment she'd had in a very long time. The next day, we took her to Look Ahead Veterinary Hospital. She was weighed in at 12 pounds, 2 ounces, 5 pounds underweight. Little Wafy was then sedated for examination. Dr. Brown found that she had numerous wounds covering her body. He was amazed at the amount of injuries she had. Wafy was then prepared for x-rays to find out what internal injuries she may have suffered. It was discovered she had had a fractured back and um, from being hit by a car and you know she just you know there's so much pain involved with her her rescue you know with coming in contact with me and you know over the course of time I was able to show her that I was here to help and I was a friend and um, you know it's the joys of rescuing animals is 
you know, coming in and making such a difference in a little life that, you know, has no chance but you. Today, thanks to your support, Little Waif is a happy, healthy dog. But she will still always bear the scars of her neglect. We count on your financial support to make rescues like this possible. Please make a donation to our safe fund so we can continue to rescue animals, both great and small. Spiro, I mean, the word, you can't even imagine how skinny he was. Um, yeah, Spiro was a horse. Um, at one point, I was trying to figure out where these feedlots were operating in California. They, they were illegal. Uh, yes, and there was one horse trader that's like, look, I do take horses there, and there are horses that they can't ship because they're too broken or skinny. Mm -hmm. And he's like, I can, I can bring them back up if you give me $100 a horse for them. And I said, okay, that's fine. And I knew we would be getting really rough horses. And so this is one horse that was too rough to, sh to ship to slaughter. Uh, we, we ended up getting him and, and changing his life. And I think one thing that you'll, you'll see consistently in all these videos is not horse related, but uh, I used to really dislike my curly hair. And so in all these videos, basically my hair is pulled back really tight and I like try to hairspray all the curls down and, and now I'm just like embraced him. It's, it's how God made me and he gave me curls. So I've got curly hair, just let him curl. That's right. Um, <laughs> but Spiro was just, he was a young stallion that had just been through who knows what. And he had so many wounds on his body and um, just so emaciated. I didn't even know if he was gonna make it, um, but he did. And um, it was really neat you know, just following his journey through life. And do you remember the parrots? When he got it adopted, they had parrots in the barn. He had parrots as okay. friends. Oh, yeah. I do remember that, yep. Yep. Yeah, so Spiro had a, an amazing transformation with us. He did, he did. And so when you watch it, don't think, oh, this poor horse is not gonna make it. He makes it, and that's those are the exciting stories. Yeah, this is one of the happy stories, even though he started off so rough with us. Happy endings. Yes.
It seems like we've always rescued a large number of horses ever since about year two or three. It's like, let's help as many as we can. Like, why wouldn't we? We had the ability, so let's do it. And this is about 24 babies that we rescued from slaughter. Yeah, and the really sad thing, I remember that the first baby horse we rescued from the slaughter pipeline was this baby that, um, well, actually from a feedlot where horses were being shipped. Mm -hmm. And when I say feedlot, this isn't um, where it, it's like it is now, like we're talking about, you know, nearly 20 years ago, thousands and thousands. And I mean, it was like close to 100,000 horses were being slaughtered every year. And at the, the feedlots, they weren't trying to get inflated prices for them. They wanted every horse they could to ship to slaughter, except the babies. And I remember talking to a feedlot worker and they're like, okay, we have this baby horse here and if you can come get it, you can have it. And I'm like, well, what happens usually with the baby horses? And they're like, well, they, they just go in a back pen and they die. Mm -hmm. And that's how the slaughter pipeline was. And it's, it's changed so much in nearly 20 years, but the fact is they still don't like shipping baby horses because they're little, but they still will. But uh, this was 24 babies that were very, very fortunate. And they came to us and we found them homes and mm -hmm. transferred them out. I don't, I don't remember the outcomes on every one of Lots them. Lots of adoptions. <laughs> but we had a lot of adoptions yeah. of baby horses. And that's what it's about is rescuing and protecting as many horses as we could. I think the, the most interesting uh -huh. thing that I remember that came from this, because we did have the news out, you know, with mm -hmm. all these baby horses. And right after the news aired, this guy called me up and he's like, um, I saw that you rescued these baby horses. That's great. It's like, I want to help your organization in a significant way. And I'm like, wow. So I'm like, well, you know, a, a semi load of hay cost you know, this. And, and he's like, you don't understand. I want to help your organization, organization in a significant way. And he's like, what do you need? Do you need trucks, trailers? And I'm like, is, is this real? And I'm like, well, yeah, we could definitely use a truck and trailer. He's like, well, what about the facility? Do you need a better facility? What, what do you need as an operating budget? And I was like, <laughs> you know, you always hear about these phone calls and like, I'm like, this is it. We've actually got one of them. And so I made up a list of, you know, it was above what we were operating at that point, but you know, like $500,000 a year. And I sent him the proposal and he's like, great, we'll get a check sent out to you. Mm -hmm. And I've, I've ordered a truck and trailer and it's, it's, uh, it's at the dealer, like they're getting it ready. And I'm like, are you serious? And I call up the dealer and they're like, yeah, yeah, no, he's got uh -huh. this truck and trailer for you. And I'm like, oh. and, but he never put money <laughs> down at the dealer. The problem was everything he said was basically leading us on and nothing ever happened with he, it. Like he, he literally put a ranch in escrow. He put a ranch in escrow for our organization. And I called and talked to the realtor. I'm like, is it really an mm -hmm. escrow? And she's like, yes, it's an escrow. I'm like, have you gotten the check yet? To, for like the earnest yeah. money. And she's like, well, it's on its way. And I'm like, huh, uh, yeah. I've heard they're, that before. They're also still um, waiting. <laughs> so basically, after a while of realizing that this, this seemed like it wasn't reality, I did some research on the guy's name and other people had gotten restraining orders against him. And it, he just liked to play with people's emotions. And I think that was, that was so sad, but it was an important lesson that we needed to mm -hmm. learn. Um, but that, that was yep. with these 24 baby horses. That's when that door opened up with the so we're still waiting fellow. For that, we're still waiting we're for that still legitimate phone call. That legitimate phone call. <laughs> Although I will say back uh, when we got the uh, large estate that launched us, that was, mm -hmm. that was that phone call for us. Yeah. And that was um, 2005. Yeah. And um, Robert and Louis Croom had passed away and they were, um, they're in the movie industry in Hollywood and they wanted a portion of their estate to go to help horses. And, uh, and um, they, the lady that was in charge of it, she called a national organization. They're like, okay, how do we take your credit card number? And I'm mm -hmm. um, like, um, I don't know. Anyways, the lady's like, she, did, she ended the phone call with them and she called me and I was very excited about 
the idea of, of getting an estate to help horses. And she's, she said, well, I called this other place and they didn't seem grateful, but you seem grateful. So I'm going to send it to you all. And it was 150000 And that's the money we used to get the organization going because it was, you well, know, we in had, a big way, in a big way. We'd already been operating for a couple of years, but it, it gave us the money for both of us to just put 100 percent of our heart mm -hmm. and soul into the organization, do what it do what it would take to get it off the ground. I often wonder if she, you know, as the executor of that estate, had the decision where to send that money, if she has any idea what that seed money did. I don't know. I've, I've tried to reach out through different people that may know her. And, um, you know, I, it's, it's something that I hope, uh, Wendy, if you're watching, thank you, because your donation through that estate has changed the lives for nearly 10,000 horses. But well, let's get let's watch yeah, these let's, babies. Yeah, let's watch these babies. So that guy that made all kinds of promises, he, he did know how to talk. He did know how to talk. And um, he called me up one day and was like, hey, Lacey, Lacey J. Dalton wants you to come up with your little miniature horse and be on the stage with her. And I'm like, hmm, okay. And that was the weird thing with the guy. Like he was such a good talker that talked about, you know, all these different people and things. And so um, he did get us on stage with Lacey J. Dalton. and. Um, this is a little Mancho Man. He's our mascot. I love that little mini so much. For some reason, I love little animals. But, anyways, I, I love little. I love all animals, but um, especially love the little little dogs, little horses. Um, but yeah, so we we took him backstage and then let him out on the stage, and uh, it was it was really fun. Um, yeah. But yeah, I really miss Mancho Man. He was he was an amazing little guy, and uh, sadly he did pass away uh, from a colic. But um, but for all the Lacey J. Dalton fans, yeah, she, she Lacey also J. fell Dalton. in love with Macho Man, yes, so she did. that was pretty fun. So this is Macho Man, and he is a rescue horse. When he first came to us, um, his owner was actually going to have him put down because um, he needed a, well, he needed a surgery, and they didn't want to get the surgery for him. And he came to us instead, and we got him the surgery. And he is now our little mascot. He goes all over the place as a little ambassador to bring awareness to rescue horses. You know, there's a lot of horses out there that need a place to go. Um, you know, there's the wild horses. There's horses that are being dumped um, at auctions. You know, there's 100, around 150,000 horses that are slaughtered every single year. And, you know, our organization is here to help those horses and get them in the homes. And um, I actually started this organization back when I was 18. Some horses from the feedlot over in Fallon. Um, 
And, you know, right now we have about 30 horses at our um, Humane Society, and, you know, that they eat a lot. Um, if anyone has horses, <laughs> they eat a lot. And, um, you know, we can always use donations, volunteers. Um, you can look us up on the website, which is horsehumane.org. And, um, or like us on Facebook. And, um, Mancha Man is delighted to be here and see all well, you guys. I'm not sure how well I can see you out there because I really can't see you out there either. But, he's probably like, where am I? And it's so bright out here. But he's, uh, he's 13 years old. And um, he's just an amazing, amazing little horse. And we are so fortunate to have him as our mascot because he could have easily been put down and we had him. Can you tell them again your website and how to get hold of you? So our website is horsehumane.org and all our contact information is on there. Um, like us on Facebook if you like horses at all. Our Facebook is a great place to go because we're always posting up updates and um, and all the horses and stuff that we rescued. We, we rescued over 500 this year alone. Um, Sheesh. This little donkey was just adorable, and um, well, you'll get to see more in the video, but the mama came in pregnant, and then uh, after uh, she was adopted, she had the baby, and we got to go up and, and film the baby after after it was, uh, after she was born, to kind of do an adoption Yeah, so this was, a, this was in the adopter's home. This was in the adopter's home, and um, she had just an adorable baby. The little baby donkey was absolutely so adorable. But have you ever seen a 30-day premature foal? So when this, this, this mare, we rescued her, and we thought she was pregnant. And one day, like there were some people that wanted to adopt her. And I was like, no, she's going to have her baby pretty soon, I think. And, but everything seemed normal. Um, but I was just, I didn't want to adopt her out being pregnant. And it, I thought, she, you know, she's going to have this baby pretty soon. And so one morning I went out and I was like, I think I saw her like after birth, like she was standing there. I was like, okay, hey, where's the baby? Cause she was in a 12 by 12 stall. And I looked in the corner and there's this little tiny, tiny little baby horse. And he hardly had any hair on his tail. Like, like the hair hadn't grown out yet. Cause he was so preemie and he was so tiny. And I was like, okay, they're going straight to the vet. And they're going to stay there until the vet says they can, they can come back. Because uh, I was like, this little guy's like way too tiny. And his little forehead was all kind of like rounded out. And those are all signs of premature uh, 
a premature birth. So I put him in the back seat of the truck and put the mama in the trailer because I was like, she's going to step on him. He's so little and drove him to the vet. So this is him at the vet with his mom. And um, it, even though his, his life started out a little unsure, uh, he, he made a he's great, healthy baby and grew up and got adopted. And yeah, but at first I was like, oh my, this little guy is too tiny. He was, he was so adorable. And it's one of the only horses I actually carried because he couldn't walk on his own very well. Like he could, but it's like, okay, we got to get him in the truck. So I just picked him up and gently put him in the truck. And these are good memories you make over, you know, almost 20 years of rescuing. Um, he was just so little and, and his little legs were so little that he had a hard time following his mom. So once they got at the vet, he got in another stall and, and um, stayed there for a while until he was basically should have been born. So even way back then we knew we have to reach as many people as we can through our media because we have to tell our story. We were writing daily blogs until 11 to 12 o'clock at night, five, six days a week. Yeah. And it was exhausting, but it got our story out there. So there was a film student that reached out to me and said, hey, I would love to follow you around and, and do some videoing. And she's like, I'll make a little promo video for you. And um, she actually, uh, recently, I reached out to her and I was like, hey, do you remember all that footage that you took of us? Like, she went to an auction with us and I'm like, do you have that? And she's like, oh, let me see. And she's like, oh, I think so-and-so might still have it. And because it was kind of a number of, of film students were helping her with it. And she actually sent me like all this raw footage from years and years ago. So sometime Jason's going to have to put that together. Um, but this is a little snippet that yep. she put together and the first horse is Spiro, which we already did a video on him. Um, but this was after he'd been at the vet for a while and you can see he has gained weight and it's looking better than the first video. Our phone numbers changed, but the website still works. So this is a really awesome, uh, just the 30 second promo video she made for us. This is the plight of the unwanted horse, starved through neglect, abused by its owner, abandoned and left to die. Until they were saved, now eyes glowing, spirits showing to live again and be loved again. Horse Plus Humane Society. Please help us help the horses. To donate or for adoption information, call 877-LUV-HORSES. That's 877-588-4677. Every horse saved is one less horse that has to suffer. Horse slaughter had been outlawed for several years and uh, a company called Valley Meat 
tried to open another slaughterhouse in Roswell, New Mexico, and the public outrage was pretty loud and vocal, and one of their employees just had it with, you know, those quote-unquote crazy animal welfare people. Um, so when you say outlaw, it hadn't necessarily been outlawed. It was that there was no USDA funding to inspect horses intended for human consumption. Correct. So it would have been illegal to slaughter a horse and sell the meat for humans to eat. And so in Roswell, New Mexico, um, this guy is like, well, I have this old slaughterhouse. Mm -hmm. I'm going to open it up and we're going to start processing thousands of horses. And people were protesting. Um, people were very upset about it because uh, there hadn't been horses slaughtered for human consumption in the United States in years. And here's this guy trying to mm -hmm. move forward. And it's basically like that year when he was trying to open it, the wording and language for the USDA funding did allow for USDA slaughter mm -hmm. inspectors. For horses. For horses. So if it would have opened, the USDA would have had to hire with our tax dollars mm -hmm. one person to inspect all the horse carcasses that had been processed through the slaughterhouse. Um, but I remember when this video aired. So this isn't our video. This is not <laughs> our video. This is a video that um, this guy in the video released. And this is edited. Um, when I first watched it, because I was very up on everything that was happening with that slaughterhouse, I was really horrified. Mm -hmm. And this, this has been edited. It's still horrifying. We we'll just watch. All you animal activists. It was just so horrifying that basically he was threatening all animal animal activists, animal people speaking out for animals, that that's what could happen to them. And he just shot that horse. No reason. For no reason other than to make a point and be threatening. And um, basically the, the horse world then like really churned and I, I do believe that that horse's life did help bring awareness that this slaughterhouse was trying to be opened and it ultimately, mm -hmm. um, we ended up going there. Well, yeah, we, we had to check out what was going on down there. So we went down to Roswell, New Mexico, and we stood in front of Valley Meat Company on Public Road, and Tony did an interview about it, and we videoed, and you can watch that now. It's a little bit of, you know, old news, so to speak, but this issue keeps coming up over and over again. And I know now that the, there's kind of a surge for why would we ship horses out of the United States if we could just humanely slaughter them yeah, in they, the United they say, States. They say humane, but when the slaughterhouses were operating within the United States, the slaughterhouses themselves would get huge violations put on them. Nothing would really happen. Um, they were actually flooding the sewer systems with horse blood, and mm -hmm. there was horse blood like actually backfilling into people's like bathtubs um, in that town where the slaughterhouse was. Um, the USDA incident reports of injured horses coming into the slaughterhouses were just horrific. Um, there was horses that, you know, basically eyeballs hanging out and broken legs, like snapped off legs and just so horrendous. And Horses are amazing animals that we train and we raise as companions and pets. And when they get into the slaughter pipeline, they are so confused and bewildered and, you know, they're, they're being shoved down chutes and they're, I think, you know, I, I see it time and time again at auctions. You get these horses and they're like so confused. They, they're like, just lead me somewhere because I don't know what you want me mm -hmm. to do. Um, so this slaughterhouse, when it was trying to open, was very much on our, our radar of we need to bring exposure to this and we need to be there and talk in front of it so we can help get the word out that this is what's happening. Oh, yeah.
Behind me is the first USDA slaughterhouse approved for horses in the United States. It is in um, Roswell, New Mexico, and at the slaughterhouse they plan on slaughtering around 100 horses a day. Uh, these aren't old, lame, decrepit horses. These are horses that are imported into the state to be killed for human consumption. These are riding horses, kids' ponies, you know, the list goes on. These are horses that have been pets. They've been given butte and even fly sprays, dewormers that are not fit for horses for human consumption. And this meat is going to be going into the food chain and causing horrible, horrible problems for humans. Horses are not meant for slaughter, and we shouldn't we shouldn't be slaughtering our horses. Um, you know, just the the torture these horses are going to go through to step foot on this property is horrific. Um, back when the slaughterhouses were operating in the United States, horses would arrive at these slaughterhouses uh, missing eyeballs, half their face torn off, uh, their limbs just ripped off um, dead on, on arrival. And um, you know, for, for horses, slaughter is not humane. And um, hopefully the SAFE Act gets passed and the slaughterhouse will never be able to open these gates. In response to Tim shooting the horse and the whole issue with Valley Meat trying to open a horse slaughterhouse, I actually wrote a song and Tawny's cousin Steve performed it about the horse that Tim shot and we named it Justice for this song. And we didn't go on and win any awards. I don't think even 5,000 people watched it. But now you get to watch it and I think it's pretty good. It kind of tells the story of that horse so it's never going to have, you know, a broad musical appeal other than if you kind of know the backstory of why it was. And uh, I know a lot of our longtime followers will recognize Steve and uh, he is a cousin of mine and he's a great singer. Um, and he, he definitely helped out with the organization for quite a while. When he first started, um, poor guy, at the time he was homeless. <laughs> and, uh, and half drunk. Oh dear. <laughs> well, anyways, he's like, he called me up. He's like, do you have any job? And I'm like, do you want to be a spy? And he's like, sure, I'd love yeah. to be a spy. And I was like, okay. So by this time I had found the feedlot um, where the horses were being shipped from California into Mexico. And it was right next to a public park. And I said, okay, Steve, so um, what I need you to do is pretend to be a homeless guy living on the river and I'll give you a camera and you can document horses being shipped to slaughter. He's like, he was down. Well, we drove him down there, dropped him off. We got like th two hours headed back on the road. We got a call that the police had picked him up. Yeah. Hauled him into town. We went back and picked him up, took him further up the river, dropped him off. Uh, anyways, he, uh, he ended up not being the best spy, but he was definitely a good singer. He kind of ended up being more like Bean instead of Johnny English, you know? It's <laughs> like, well, you can try. But he does, he does do a very nice job singing. Yeah, and so. he helped us out for uh, a number of years, yeah. and he's, he's um, living in uh, you, Boy, Idaho. Idaho. Yeah, yeah, Idaho, and he's a logger now, so. And horse trainer, yes. horse trainer. He's, and, he still loves, he still yeah. loves horses. I was born on a ranch When I opened my eyes There she was Against that blue sky My mother was standing Staring at me And then she nudged me up to my feet and this is the first thing I ever heard run justice run we've got it from here run justice run and have no At six months old, my 
My mother was sold And as they led her away from me She nickered softly as if to say Run, justice, run You've got it from here Run, justice, run And have no fear I was trained to leave Then I was trained up to ride I was the center of this little girl's pride She'd get on my back And she would whisper to me Run, justice, run We've got it from here Run, justice, run And have no I was sold one day to a man and his wife They said they would give me a real great life Two weeks later I was taken to a cell I was bought by a man They said his name was Tim The other horses They whinnied at me They said run, justice run gotta get out of here run justice run it's time to no fear on that fateful day there was a camera pointed my way Tim led me out into the open he talked into the camera then he pulled a gun from his holster and pointed it at my head. The last thing I heard was <laughs> Run, justice, run We've got it from here Run, justice, run and have no fear Oh run, justice run We've got it from here Run, justice run And have no One thing that we've always done is assisted law enforcement mm -hmm. in animal cruelty cases. And in this one, you get to kind of follow along and see us uh, assisting. Um, this was in Lassen County, Northern California, um, assisting with the case of a whole lot of horses. And I remember there was this one mule that had like this tumor on the side of its face. And um, we were able to get them all loaded up and safely back to our shelter. and. Um, I, I think this was kind of like a, you get glimpses into how we did things back then, but this was more of like kind of like the episodes we have now of showing what happened. Um, but it's it's a really good little follow us journey uh, when we were going up to help all these all these horses and and uh, 
the animal control officer did get injured by one of them. Um, she hurt her hand pretty, pretty good. But other than that, we were, we were all, all good and got them all back.
As, as we've said over and over, we rescue horses from auction. That's what we do. And people just watching from the sidelines really don't know what it's like, but you did your very best to educate people with this one. Yeah, basically I, I tried to take, I mean, it's so hard when you, you've done this for so long and you see this time and time again and there's, there's nothing that ever changes with it. And the auctions are always the same and there's, there's always suffering animals. And I tried to make this video to, to show the need. And this is like, this is, these horses need help so bad. So I put this video together to just try to raise awareness of horses in the slaughter pipeline. Every month we try to rescue as many horses from auction as possible. Without us, these horses would be shipped to slaughter. The horses we find at auctions are very sad dumped by their owners without a thought to their future. My name is Tawny Preisner. I'm founder of Horse Plus Humane Society. I want to share my story. When I was a little girl, I loved animals and especially horses, but as I got older, I realized horses needed to be rescued. When I was 19 years old, I began going to auctions and saving as many horses as I could on a very limited budget. That's when Horse Plus Humane Society was founded, when I was only 19 years old. I knew these horses, being sold at auction, were going to slaughter. When I was growing up, my neighbor was a kill buyer and shipped horses to slaughter. I made it my goal to save as many horses as I could from that horrible fate. I knew I couldn't save them all, but for the ones I could save, it would make a world of difference to them. I began to save a lot of horses from auctions. The things I saw at auctions hurt my heart in so many ways. So many abused, neglected horses, I had to do something for them. I had to save them. Sitting there and so many auctions watching kill buyers buy horses just broke my heart. The conditions of the auctions were also horrific for the most part. Some pens even having open nails for horses to step on. The kill buyer's trailers were always waiting and the auctioneers were always rattling off selling the horses. The kill buyers weren't the nicest people and so many of the horses were injured in the process. This horse was young, had never been tied, and their owners drug it into the trailer and kicked its back legs to get into the trailer. I knew I had to save as many of these horses as I could. One time pulling into an auction. To load up horses I had saved, this poor horse was trying to be loaded. She didn't know how to lead. She ended up collapsing on the ground. They kicked her, they beat her. It was, it was just so painful to watch. And finally they didn't know what to do and she was collapsed on the ground and I, I bought her for 50 bucks on the ground and saved her and she's a wonderful horse now. 
over the course of you know all these years rescuing horses I've seen so many horrible horrible things that have happened to horses it just hurts my heart and sometimes I can't take it I just I hate seeing horses suffer like this I hate seeing any animals suffer but he shouldn't have had to go through that he just <laughs> When I'm all alone, I just have to let it out sometimes. But whenever I look into the eyes of the horses that we're trying to save, I know I'm doing the right thing. I have to save them. Who else will if I don't? Their owners dumping them at auctions just because they're too skinny or they're too old? I can't let that happen and just turn a blind eye and not save them. But it takes a lot of money. They're going to slaughter right now, those ones loading up in that trailer right now. It's it's really sad. And some people, like I hear that, those horses loading up onto the killer truck. I hear that every time I go to these auctions and it's heartbreaking. Because I could have saved them if there was more donations. And I have people say, oh, you know, if I would have known I would have donated. Every time I go to auctions like this, there's horses that load onto these trucks and it's, it's devastating. I can't save them all, but with donations, I can sure save a lot more. Some people want to say that slaughter doesn't happen. I've looked into the slaughter trucks. I have seen the dying horses that are getting trampled in these trailers. Slaughter is alive and well. It's just not happening in the United States. They're being exported out, and it's cool and a horrible process. This horse died in my arms. I was able to save him and the only thing I could do was let him pass away in my arms. It's horrible what happens to our horses in the United States. So please help me. I need your help to save these horses. Every month, every week, they're sold at auctions and with your help, we can save them. But I can't do it alone. Please make a donation now. So I know that was uh, kind of hard to watch and all that footage like I shot on my phone even the horse down in the slaughter truck. And it's so hard being a rescuer, seeing those things firsthand. And it's extremely frustrating because it seems like it never ends. But we are able to change the world for one horse at a time. And it's because of amazing people like yourself. And um, this next video is kind of a fun project. Um, we were asked, actually asked to try to make like a promotional um, adoption video yeah, and yeah. they actually here's you know get a professional photographer and do this and we're like professional for woo videographer yeah, this yeah. is gonna be good so uh this was finally where it wasn't me trying to edit it together and, mm -hmm. and jason trying to edit it together this was like we had we had professionals come in to do this yep. so it was exciting now we had moved to tennessee by this point mm -hmm. so some of the footage in the previous video was in tennessee yeah and then this was shot entirely in tennessee which this is this video is at our shelter now, so you'll see that it's so different mm -hmm. um, than you know what it is now. Yeah. There's so many amazing buildings, and they're all here to help horses. You know, the vet barn's almost done. Um, you know, training barn, all these amazing things. Hi, I'm Kristen, the trainer for Horse Plus Humane Society. I've grown up on the back of a horse, and they have taught me many things in life. Horse Plus Humane Society is an open door shelter. We rescue hundreds of horses all across the United States every year. If you're looking for a horse, please consider adoption. I can help you find the right horse. Is there such a thing as an unwanted horse? Well, there really isn't because all horses have a slaughter price on their head. Kill buyers want horses that some people would consider these are the unwanted horses. Um, so every horse is wanted by somebody. Um, the reasons they want them is not always the best. Um, but this is a video kind of just, you know, the unwanted horse. Um, you know, sometimes there's a stallion breeds a mare and, and it does create an unwanted baby, but that kill buyer out there is going to want to ship that baby when it's old enough. So um, this is just kind of a little thought provoking video we made to kind of get people thinking about these horses in the slaughter pipeline. Thank you.
those were a lot of memories. Um, mm. And it's, it's really amazing the support we've consistently had to help these horses in the slaughter pipeline. Well, and that's what we do is we go to auction, we rescue horses, we assist law enforcement, owner surrenders, we do everything we can to help as many horses as we can. And in the last couple of years, we've gotten into giving grants around the world. Which is amazing. I would have never thought that that was something that was even possible, but we're always asked to help these different horses. And through donations to help rescue shelter and protect horses, a portion we're able to set aside to help horses in, in various situations around the world. And that's, that's just incredible. And really the easiest way to help out is to text HPHS to 89871. It's so easy that, you know, everybody could do it. Just, you know, give it a try. Even a dollar can help a lot. So thank you so much for watching this video and thank you so much for your continued support. And follow us on our uh, Facebook page, Horse Plus Humane Society. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel so you can watch more awesome videos, just a little more updated. Um, and uh, follow the work we do. We are constantly rescuing and sheltering and protecting horses. And we have weekly videos now. Um, the work we do is, is it's, it just takes me back. I'm like, I don't know how it got to this point, but it was just one hard day after another trying to make the difference for horses. Yep. So uh, check out our, our social media channels and follow the work that we do. And if you're not subscribed to our YouTube channel, hit the subscribe button, hit the little bell. Thank you guys so much. Thank you.